Mark Gibson Schumann on his channel. The content with the nation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Australia. Enjoy learning! So, balance scorecards, it's a strategic-based control. So, balance scorecard is a strategic management system that defines a strategic-based responsibility accounting system. Strategy is defined as choosing the market and customer segments the business unit intends to serve, identifying the critical internal and business processes that the unit must excel at to deliver the value propositions to customers in the targeted market segments, selecting individuals and organizational capabilities required for the internal, customer, and financial objectives. So the balance scorecards translates an organization's missions and strategy into operational objectives, performance measures for four different perspectives, financial perspective, customer's perspective, internal business process perspective, and the learning growth or infrastructure perspective. No? So balance scorecards class, uh, basically this is just a, a strategic tool. No? Kasi remember, uh, we kept on talking about financial objectives. We kept on talking about plans. Pero in terms of um, measuring it, there's another tool, and we call it balance scorecards. No, so in balance scorecards, we're actually uh, trying to uh, trying to translate those financial goals into operational objectives and performance measures. Where uh, later on, we're also going to identify each and try to uh, identify each into uh, different perspectives now we have four perspective in here uh, customer perspective internal business process financial and learning and growth okay so common characteristics of uh, balance scorecards it should be possible by examining companies balance scorecard to infer its strategy and the assumptions underlying that strategy the balance scorecard should emphasize continuous improvement of course, some of the performance measures on the balance score, scorecard should be non-financial. Uh, like I said, if you want to generate sales, it doesn't really mean that it always needs, I mean, it always translates to increase in sales by a percentages. No, it's, all, it's also, can also be, um, say, increase in the number of customers. No, so imagine your, your, uh, goal is to increase your sales, but it doesn't really need to be always an increase in uh, by uh, a percentage of sales. Bettering ibang ibang say ibang performance measure. Do na papasok si balance scorecard later on. Makikita natin yan. The scorecards for individuals should contain only those performance measures that they can actually influence. Uh, in a decentralized organization, syempre, meron ka lang control over your department, no? So, therefore, ang sinasabi dito, yung scorecards mo should be within your within your performance measures lang. Dun, dun lang sa meron kang control, no? The ultimate objectives of the organization are usually financial. That's true. But better financial resol results cannot be obtained without improving customers' per perceptions at since sabi natin kanina in order to improve that it's usually necessary to improve internal business processes so that the products and services are actually better and in order to improve business processes it's necessary that employees learn pag-usapan natin to kasi dito pa lang uh, it's it, it it's encompassing four perspective no na touch na agad yung financial of course uh, customer learning and growth and uh what's the other other perspective na na touch din ito yung internal business processes so kanina pinag-uusapan natin na when it comes to business processes it's it always we always need to improve no so kaya ang continuous improvement palagi kaizen pero along with that improvement syempre we also 
train people so that's uh uh trying to improve our business processes uh, trying to improve our internal business processes we Im we train people paano ba yan in service in shared service uh setup ito yung mga uh, business process outsourcing no so once the uh once the process is migrated in the philippines uh mostly system developers with the help of accountants we innovate the way we process uh say sabihin natin na we build customers the way we collect uh from from our customers sabihin before baka dun sa nasa inong nasa ibang bansa pa eh we build it by uh, printing the invoice and then sending it by a mail. Pero this time, baka ang ginagawa natin is we still send it pero by a PDF na. So, by a mail na, by a email na. No? So, things like that. So, balanced scorecard as a motivation and feedback mechanism. The performance measures on the balanced scorecard provide motivation and feedback for improving. So it motivates and it's, as well, it's also a feedback mechanism. Uh, paano ba yun? Kasi nga, meron ka mga targets, no? Kasi kanina, pinag-uusapan natin more on financial target. Pero this time, uh, through balanced scorecards, meron ka mga non-financial targets. And from there, it also, uh, it will also drive incentives and such a, in, in that way also it motivates you at the same time uh it uh, paves the way to get feedback no uh sige magbibigay ako ng example siguro para mas uh, ma-appreciate yung topic Kasi ito, uh, probably later on, no? let's discuss each perspective first. No? The financial perspective establishes long-term and short-term financial performance objectives. It is concerned with global financial consequences of the other three perspectives. Thus, the objective and measures of the other perspective must be linked to the financial objectives. Ito yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina na sabi natin increase in sales. No? We have to increase sales by 10%. Yun yung uh, overall financial goal natin. No? Pero along with that, meron kang, meron kang mga other perspective. Sabi natin na uh, internal business internal business process. Paano tayo mag-increase ng sales? Sabi mo, um, uh, bakit hindi natin ayusin yung processes natin such a way na uh, hindi lang natin mapapataas yung sales, mapapabilis pa natin yung production. Yung mga things like that. No? Other, siguro naman sa uh, learning and development perspective or learning and growth, uh, why can't we introduce um, training among employees no? in that way uh, we can help them improve themselves and in the long run uh, they can contribute more to the company uh, another example would be uh, so customer perspective naman siguro uh, uh, ang objective natin is to increase number of customers Eh, paano kung halimbawa ang, ang, ang measure naman natin is customer satisfaction by survey results? Saan, yung, saan tingin nyo papasok yun? Is it customer perspective, internal business process, uh, financial or learning and growth? Yun lang ha, customer satisfaction. Tapat lang pag mo, customer perspective, internal business process, learning and growth, or itong financial perspective? So, ako na rin sasagot. So, it, it falls under customer perspective. Imagine, ang performance measure mo is customer satisfaction. It's non-financial in nature, no? But, ultimately, this will drive, or this will help the company in achieving financial goals, no? Siyempre, kung satisfy ang customer, there will be repeat sales which will uh, in turn increase your sales, no? So, ganun, ganun natin siya palagi i-treat, no? 
customer perspective is the source of the revenue component for the financial objective. This perspective defines and selects the customer and market segment in which the company chooses to compete. Uh, sabi natin, magbibigay ulit ako isang example, ang pagpipilian mo ulit yung apat, customer's perspective, financial, learning and growth, and internal business process. So sabi ko dito, uh, we'll, we're going to introduce new products to market. Saan yun sa apat? Ako na ulit yung sasagot, it falls under the internal business process perspective because we're going to introduce new product. Again, it's non-financial uh, non-financial in nature, pero it will drive what? Financial perspective, which in turn helps um, company in, in achieving financial goals. Next, process perspective. It's uh, well to provide the framework needed for this perspective. A process value chain is defined. The process value chain is made up of three processes. The innovation, the op operation, and the post-sales process. Ito na. Cycle time is the time required to produce one unit of product. And velocity is the number of units that can be produced in a given period of time. Okay. And uh, finally, we have the learning and growth. This is a source of capabilities that enable the accomplishment of the other three objectives. Pag-usapan muna natin isa pang example. Uh, saan papasok kaya ang value added per employee? Is it customer perspective? Siyempre, hindi. Internal business processes? Hindi rin kasi pag sinabi internal business processes, ito na mismo yung uh, how you produce the product. no? So, therefore, it falls under learning and growth perspective. Isa pa, para lang, ano, para lang uh, mas ma-appreciate yung topic. How about employee turnover? Pag sinabi employee turnover, ito yung uh, number of times na nagpapalit ka ng employee kasi nagre-resign. So saan siya papasok? So again, uh, under learning and growth perspective. Of course, itong mga pag-uusapan natin na uh, other topics, this will fall under the internal business processes. No? So we have delivery cycle time, throughput or manufacturing time, and the manufacturing cycle efficiency. So delivery cycle time, this is the total elapsed time between an order is placed by a customer and when it is shipped to the customer. So, well, from the wor wor word itself, no, delivery cycle. So from the time that the order is placed to shipment to the customer. So part of the time, Part of this time is wait time that occurs before the order is placed into production. Throughput, this is the total time, total elapsed time between when the order is initiated into production and when it is shipped to the customer. So it, it co consists of processing time, inspection, move, and queue time. The only element that adds value is processing time. Inspection time, ito clear na to class. Ha? Inspection time, move time, queue, and their associated activities do not add value. Pag-usapan muna natin to. Value adding and non-value adding. Pag sinabi lang value adding, ito yung mga uh, processes or items that will actually add value to the product. So in this case, sa pinag-uusapan natin dito is business process. No? So in, in business process daw, processing time, the time that you actually process the goods or materials into finished goods, this is the only uh, only value adding time. No? The rest hindi na. Ano ba kasi yung uh, other business process? No? Uh, inspection. Move time. Ibig sabihin, move time is just moving moving or material handling, queuing time, waiting time. No, So, those are non-value adding. Kaya nga pinag-uusapan natin pag sa product ba, um, for example, a pen. No? Uh, binibenta mo siya sa market 
binebenta siya sa market at standard price na 15. Pero ikaw, nagbibenta, binibenta mo at 100 pesos. Ngayon si customer nagtanong, oh, bakit ba ganito kamahal tong pen mo? Eh, in the market, I can only buy this for 10 pesos and yet you're selling me this pen at 100 pesos. Uh, sasabihin mo, ah, kasi po, uh, doon sa mas- sa plant namin, yung ink, bago pumunta yan doon sa processing time, naka-ref yan, naka-refrigerate yan para hindi, hindi matunaw. Imagine yung time na naka-refrigerate yan, that's non-value adding in so far as the product, in so far as the customer is concerned. Kasi ano bang value niyan sa kanya? Wala, no? So, that's added cost for you. But in fact, that's non-value adding, no? I hope that's that's clear enough. Quality cost measurements. We have quality link activities. Uh, those perform because poor quality may or may or does exist. Cost of quality are costs that exist because poor quality may or... Ngulit ko lang yata. Okay. Control activities are performed by an organization to prevent or detect poor quality. So control costs are costs of performing uh, control co- performing control activities. So there are two categories, no? prevention and appraisal. So prevention costs are incurred to prevent poor quality in the products. Appraisal is to determine whether products and services are conforming to their requirements or customers. Later, meron din tayong sample problem for that. Uh, failure activities are performed by an organization. So there are two types. We have internal failure. Uh, it is uh, incurred because products and services do not conform to specification or customer needs. And external failure. So this is um, cost incurred to conform to requirements or satisfy customer needs. And non-conformance is detected after being delivered to outside parties. No? Okay, so we have here productivity. It is the measure, it is the measures, measurement of the relationship between the actual input and actual output. So partial productivity is a quantity of output produced over quantity of input used. And total factory productivity is quantity of actual quantity of output produced over cost of all inputs used. So let's try uh, to apply those theory in exercise number one. No? So that's Novex. Novex company keeps... Careful track of time to complete customer uh, orders during the most recent uh, during the most recent quarter. The following average times were recorded for each unit of order. So we have wait time. At, this is in days, no? Inspection time, process time, move time, and queue time. Goods are shipped as soon as production is completed. So let's compute for the following. Throughput time, manufacturing cycle time, or manufacturing cycle efficiency, percentage of production time in non-value added activities, and the delivery cycle time. Isa-isahin natin yung requirement. No? So number one is throughput time. Uh, Kanina, in, in the theory part, pinakita natin paano ba yung pag-compute ng throughput time. Sabi natin, it's process time plus inspection time move time and queue, queue, queuing time. No? So this is queue time. So gaya ulit ang ginagawa natin, kunin ko lang yung problem. Para focus tayo sa discussion. Again, so apply lang natin. This is throughput time, no? Throughput time. So 
So process time is two zero point four. Of time is zero point six days and five days for queuing. So therefore, throughput time is eight days. Okay. Mm. Next, manufacturing efficiency, cycle efficiency. Sabi natin kanina, ang manufacturing cycle efficiency is your value added time over your throughput time. Pero tandaan, sinabi ko rin kanina na ano nga yung value added time lang in business process that's only your process time. So therefore, process time is 2 over your throughput time. So that's 0 0.25. Okay? So this is your manufacturing cycle of efficiency. So number three, what percentage of production time is spent in non-value added activities? O class, kung ang value added time is uh, represents process time of two days, and that's your manufacturing cycle efficiencies of uh, of twenty five percent. Therefore, yung remainder na seventy five percent. That's equivalent to your non-value added activities. Okay, so it's it's calculated by well simply deducting the twenty five percent manufacturing cycle efficiency from one hundred percent. Okay, so requirement number four is compute the delivery cycle time. So in delivery cycle time, it's actually what your wait time plus your throughput time. Throughput time. So sabi natin ang wait time is 17 days and throughput time is 8 days. So therefore, your delivery cycle time is 25 days. Okay? So that's uh, problem number one. Problem number two, ito, pinapacompute sa atin, ano yung mga value-added activities and their total time and value and non-value-added activities, also the time, plus uh, plus the manufacturing cycle efficiency. Sige, isa-isay natin to, kunin ko lang ulit yung problem. Ito ko lang ang lagay. Pero syempre, para na ma-identify natin yun, kailangan mo natin alamin ano ba yung mga value adding at saka non-value adding dyan. Isa-isay natin ha. Uh, receiving materials. Type ko lang muna ito isa-isa para hindi ta Actually, pwede ko itong copyin from the problem. Okay. Oh, sige. Isa-isahin muna natin yung uh, business operations. So, receiving materials. Is it value-adding or non-value-adding activity? Anyone? O, di ba, next week ko na kanina, kailan natin siya sasabihin value-adding, no? If it's actually contribute to the manufacture to product. Non-value-adding, eh, kung hindi naman. Uh, receiving materials. 
Non adding po. Non value adding. Okay. So, pwede ko ba lagay na lang na n pag non value adding? Storing materials. Non. Okay, very good. Handling materials. Value adding. This is also non value adding, no? Handling is lang siya. Eh. So, remember, di ba, pag, uh, pag value adding, this is actually uh, the processing of the of materials to finish good, no? So, this is material handling lang, eh. So, this is also non value adding. Ito, cutting uh, and measuring materials, syempre, ito is uh, value adding na. Assembling materials also is value adding. Building boxes, because you can't make complete the product without these boxes, so this is value adding. Also attaching hinges. How about inspection? Ito pinag-usapan natin kanina. This is still non-value adding. So, ito total ko lang lahat ng value adding. So that's twenty-seven days. So that's requirement number one. And of course, non-value adding, so that's uh, eight days, so that's requirement number two. Now, let's compute for the manufacturing cycle efficiency. So sabi natin, manufacturing cycle efficiency, total lead time is, ito lahat yan. So that's your total lead time of 35. Manufacturing cycle efficiency. Sabi natin is value adding over total lead time. Kanina kinumpute natin yung value adding. So that's 27 over the total lead time. So that's... 77%. So therefore, kung this is 77.14%, this, this is equivalent to value adding. Yung remainder nyan, that's related to non-value adding. Okay, so yun lang ang key item dito class. We have to uh, make sure na tama yung pag-classify natin whether it's value adding or non-value adding. Okay, so isa pang sample problem but this time let's identify it between prevention, appraisal, internal, and external cost. Kunin ko lang ulit to. Okay, copying ko lang ulit yung problem. Sige, isa-isayin natin ha. Sige. Number one, uh, well, uh, what, are, what is required is we, we need to compute the total amount of prevention cost, appraisal, internal, and failure cost. No? And this, this is the data for the quality cost report. So number one, liability arising from defective products. Ano ba yan? Prevention cost, appraisal cost, internal failure, or external failure. So this one is external, yes, very good, external failure. Pwede ba sulat ko lang external? Number two, 
final product testing and inspection this is this falls under appraisal returns arising from quality problems returns external. arising very good external next technical support provided to suppliers internal okay so this is prevention actually because uh, technical support provided to suppliers no this is prevention next disposal of defective products and it, this, this is internal maintenance of test equipment prevention maintenance of test equipment possible siya na prevention eh, no? pero uh, this is more of appraisal siguro ang pwede nating ano pwede nating gawin uh, in in oh sorry in invalidating that is we can go back to the definition no so sabi natin prevention or costs incurred to prevent poor quality in the products or services being produced Nag-uusapan natin maintenance of test equipment appraisal are incurred in to determine whether the products are conforming to their requirements or customer needs so in this case dahil test equipment pa lang siya kaya naman ko fall siya under appraisal okay next system development system development is prevention ato na depreciation of test equipment syempre meron ka na dyan sa, kanina sa test equipment so that's also form part of appraisal but debugging of software errors no software so this is internal <clears throat> so compute lang natin uh, external uh, appraisal internal and prevention so kunin lang natin isa-isa siguro kunin ko lang dito uh, external So, sana mga external natin. Ito, plus, this one. 106,000. Appraisal. Meron kang final product testing. Uh, maintenance of test equipment. And depreciation of test equipment. So, that's 104,000. Okay prevention so you have technical support provided to suppliers and system development okay so that's hundred nineteen thousand plus internal so you have disposal of defective products plus and debugging of software errors so hundred eighty five thousand so in a class so that's how we identify ang key thing siguro to um to consider here is yung definition of each uh type of cost no kasi sometimes this is misleading no especially yung kanina yung pinag-usapan natin na uh, maintenance of uh, equipment no so if it's a test equipment it falls under appraisal so <clears throat> i think that ends our discussion on balance scorecards this is the year instructor mark gibson thank you for learning with us see you in our next discussion don't forget to like and subscribe see ya